Electronics, we use them every day. Smartphones, laptops, televisions, headphones, chargers. We buy these products now more than ever before. Billions and billions of devices. But what impact does this have on the environment? The impact is immense and is mostly caused by the production. When you spend one euro on electronics, the environmental impact is twice as big compared to other goods. Our electronics contain rare materials like gold, cobalt and lithium. The mining of these materials causes serious health and environmental problems. Soil, oceans and rivers are being polluted as we speak. Less than 40% of all the electronic waste, also called e-waste, is getting recycled. This process is complex and never recovers all the materials. And what happens to the rest of our e-waste? A lot of it is being sold to third world countries, where they end up in landfill or get burned for the valuable materials. Heavy metals like cadmium, nickel and lead can leak into the environment. Countries. Um, Holland, um, you know, America, Canada, and they are supposed to dispose of these things all by themselves. But rather than do that, they put them on ships and send them here. In Guyu, China, 80% of all the children have dangerous amount of lead in their blood, caused by the burning of the e-waste. A couple of other facts. E-waste is the fastest growing waste stream in the world. Every year, we generate more than 50 million metric tons of e-waste. This is equivalent to 100 blue whales every day. Your smartphone contains 17 rare materials. One ton of iPhones contains 300 times more gold than a ton of gold ore. 160 bathtubs of water are being used to produce one smartphone. The CO2 emissions of a laptop are 423 kilos. This is equal to 88 stakes. We can conclude that our consumption of electronics is extremely harmful for the environment. We try to eat less meat, buy sustainable clothing and fly less by plane. But why don't we think about electronics? If we change our behavior, we can decrease and minimize our impact on the environment. So how can we do this? The first step are to refuse and reduce. How often are you going to use the product? If not often, try to borrow or lease it. Another good option is to last longer with your old products. This can be done by maintaining them in the right way. If you charge your phone in the right way, you can extend that lifetime by one or two years. If we would all do this, we would save CO2 emissions of 636,000 cars. Is your old product broken? Try to repair it. Websites like iFixit can provide manuals, tools and information. Buying less electronics, lasting longer with them and repairing them results in less mining, less e-waste and less damage to the environment. When you really need a new device, the best thing you can do is buy a second-handed or refurbished one. These products are much cheaper and better for the environment. Keyboards, mouses and chargers only cost a couple of euros at the thrift shop. If these are not an option for you, you can buy a product that is produced in an eco-friendly way. There are a lot of certification marks that check this for us, like TCO certified, EPEAT or Nordic Swarm label. I hope now you know how you can minimize your impact on the environment. After all, that was one of the goals of making this video. Just as this video is about to end its life, so is my smartphone. And one thing is for sure, my new one will be refurbished.